What is going on guys, Jack here, and welcome to a brand new series here on my channel, Avoiding the Drop. Uh, one of the most common questions I get asked on FM and on my channel is, how do I turn around a team? And that's why I'm going to be showing off this series. Uh, this series, essentially what we're going to be doing is uh, taking a team struggling in a league in December and hopefully saving them from the drop, whilst on the way I kind of explain my thought progress and process, how I'm doing stuff, why I'm doing it, and uh, you know, giving you some tips along the way that should hopefully allow you to, I guess, save teams in FM if you're struggling. So, the way I'm going to do this is, I've not actually seen who I'm going to get to manage, but I've already decided I'm going to be managing the team second from bottom in the Premier League at the start of December. Um, I have no idea who it's going to be. I am on the LFC Marshall update, and I'd quite like to get one of the teams who's just come up. Uh, but anyway, you know, that, let's see who we're going to get. So, uh, looking at the league table, we are going to be Crystal Palace. Um, okay, that's going to be an interesting one. Uh, top of the league at Everton which is slightly odd. Um, but no, Crystal Palace is an interesting team to get, I guess, paired with. Um, I'm pretty sure they're one of the weaker sides in the league. Uh, obviously, I'm on the LFC Marshall update, as I mentioned. If you don't know what that is, it's essentially a summer transfer update um, for Football Manager, but it also moves uh, all the leagues around and stuff. So uh, that's how I'm going to be Crystal Palace in the Premier League. Um, if you want to know about downloading that, uh, you can do so by uh, going onto my channel. I've already done a video all about the LFC Marshall update and you can go there and you can uh, basically download it and try this out for yourself. Uh, just what I was doing there was I have to add a manager as Crystal Palace manager and then remove the one I used to holiday. Uh, but here we are at Crystal Palace. So I've got a personal message. I'll attend the meetings. Uh, oh, this is all standard. Just I've just got to, I just got to kind of suck up to the board. Um, so yeah, basically this series, I'm going to be going step by step through things. This episode, I'm going to be talking about setting up the squad. Uh, and then in future episodes, I'm going to be doing uh, about staff and training next episode. And then uh, January time, we'll be doing all about the transfer window and signing players who are going to add some benefit to the squad. And then... Um, in the kind of we're going to do monthly updates after that through the season uh, where I'm kind of talking about how I've responded to stuff that's come about. But anyway, looking at the squad, uh, first little tip I can give you is when you come to a new squad, um, you'll always have, you know, your captain and vice captain from the previous manager. Uh, one thing you need to check with, obviously, captains is the influence is the big golden number. If that's good, they'll make a good captain. Uh, but the other thing that needs to be worth mentioning is the fact that you want it to be a first team player really uh, you want it to be someone who's going to definitely be playing so I know Zedinak is one of the best players in the club he's got a fairly decent star rating so that's not a problem and then for vice captain we've got Spironi who's three star so that's not a problem but it's worth keeping an eye open because sometimes previous managers or your assistant will suggest uh, that someone with a really high influence should be your captain despite the fact they never play first team football so apparently we're lacking a right winger. We'll come on to that shortly. Uh, and then uh, just looking at this stuff, uh, we've got the background history of the club. I'm kind of curious to see where we're predicted to finish. Uh, 20th. So that's that's not too easy, but we'll, hopefully we can do something there. So uh, predicted to finish bottom, but we are going to be trying to prove people wrong. Looking at the bottom of the league, it is really close actually. You know, one win would see you jump out of the relegation zone. West Ham slightly trailing behind, but it's good to see that we're still kind of within touching distance of the pack ahead. So, uh, kicking things straight off, the one thing I like to do immediately when I first come to a club is set up my own personal view. Uh, the way you can do this is you can insert your columns yourself, coaching, and then stuff like best position, best tactical role, uh, your contract stuff, and then you can just like sort this out to your personal preference. Another thing you can do is if you click the drop-down menu and then go to custom, uh, you can hit create custom, uh, customize, uh, sorry, create copy of current view or export current view. And what this does is it allows you to save it and then you can load it up uh, by going to, I think it's import current view, import view, and then you can choose one of these uh, that you've already saved. So I have two there, but this is pretty much what I like to run with. So looking at the squad, one thing I like to do is kind of assess the squad kind of statuses at the moment. So we have three players out with injuries. Uh, and two of which are very good players. We have Chris Commons, who's going to be out for a while. Uh, the left midfielder, very good left midfielder. Lacks pace, but he looks like he could be a nifty inside forward. Uh, so that's one thing worth looking at. Uh, and then Jared Inax away on international duty. He returns on the 10th, so that's 10 days away. And Richard Dunn, old, experienced centre-back, is out for two weeks. So um, 
I highly recommend doing this to start with. But anyway, let's get straight on to the main kind of aspect of this episode, which is going to be setting up a tactic and, um, I guess, trying to get the most out of your team. Because one thing that annoys the crap out of me on FM is when uh, someone just downloads a tactic and imports it and goes, here's my tactic, the aren't I pro, and wins everything with it. Uh, which doesn't actually happen that often, and I'll come on to that shortly. But I think, for me, one of the most rewarding elements of FM is kind of developing a tactic and system for yourself that's unique to your team and making it work. And one thing, especially with the newer FMs, is you really have to play to your strength. In old FMs, uh, you know, you could just download a tactic and it would work. On kind of FM 12, and particularly FM 13 is where it's become most prominent, you really have to play a tactic that's going to suit your team. So anyway, what I'm doing here is I'm basically going to uh, insert the column for coaching and then uh, current ability, which is already here. And then I'm going to organize the players by ability. And I'm simply going to move the best players in the squad, according to my assistant, into the first team. Now, it is worth mentioning the fact that these um, star ratings aren't 100% accurate in terms of, um, I guess... Uh, you know, just because a player says he's four star doesn't mean he's better than a player with three and a half star. But just as we start things off here, um, it's easy. It's easy just to set um, the squad up like this, uh, just simply going off purely, uh, I guess, the assistant's um, recommendations. So looking at the squad, I'm not really sure how I'm going to play this yet because the board expect me to play attacking football. Um, but what I'm thinking I might go with is something fairly defensive because we are going to have to play defensive but have an attacking philosophy. Uh, one thing that people get very confused with, and this is just a general thing, uh, is that, for example, with this tactic, I could play it on overload and very rigid. And you'd think, oh, well, you're just going to be throwing men forward. What people fail to kind of realise is the fact that if I'm playing on very rigid, the players set with a defensive role aren't going to respond to the overload like they normally would. They won't throw themselves forward. They will still sit back and kind of be fairly conservative about it all. So a little tip there, you know, if you're being expected to play uh, attacking football or maybe you've got a very good attacking players and you want to play attacking football but you don't want to overcommit, setting yourself to very rigid and playing with an all-defensive back four is one way you can certainly kind of overcome it. So I'm kind of looking at this squad and I'm not really sure how I want to set up here in terms of... Um, I guess, squad mentalities and whatever. Uh, looking at the side, this looks like it's going to be the starting 11. Uh, what I'd like to do to begin with is set my roles up. So you see here, I've got everyone's best positions listed down. I've then got everyone's best duties and everyone's best roles. Uh, that, they're all in the opinion of the assistant, and depending on your assistant, these will usually be fairly accurate. Uh, next episode, I will be covering uh, kind of staff and training and how to set that up. But for now, this episode, we will just be focusing purely on this. So, um, team looks fairly solid, it has to be said. Um, looking at the ratings, it's they look good, but now we need to look at kind of what we have to work with. So starting at the back, Spironi in goal. I already looked at him as vice captain. This guy's a very good goalkeeper. Uh, he's got good aerial ability, which is good to see. At centre back, we go with Richard Dunn, who's a, a fairly decent centre back, a little bit sluggish. Uh, and then I guess partnering him is going to be Delaney, who's another fairly slow centre back. You know, both these guys are in their early 30s. And one thing I'd like to do immediately with this, because I've seen that, is I'm going to change my defensive line to a fairly deep line. And the reason for doing this is there's no point in me playing attacking football and then playing a really high defensive line when I have two of the slowest centre backs you can imagine. So uh, that's the reason for that. At left back, we have Pantzel, who's a very nice... Uh, sorry, Jonathan Parr at left back and Pantzel at right back. Uh, Pantzel here, fairly good little wing back, it has to be said. He might be a player who I maybe look to get forward a little. Uh, the Norwegian international has some decent pace and decent stamina and decent work rate, which helps with wing back. And Pantzel here, another player who looks like he could certainly play a wing back role for us. So I'm actually going to put these as defensive wing backs. And I'm not too worried about playing this because we have Jedinak here, who's... um. A decent anchor man who's going to be holding the fort for us. Uh, so we have Jedinak here, as I said, going to be anchor man, although he is away at the moment. And then partnering him, we have Owen Garvin. He's a fairly good creative player, however, he's not the strongest player in the squad. And he might be a position I look to improve because whilst we have Jedinak, who's a very good defensive midfielder, it's nice to have kind of a creative force in the centre. Obviously, I don't know how good Williams is yet, but we'll come on to that. 
Chris Commons here at left mid. Not the fastest player in the world, but decent attacking stats. One thing that I like to see in my wingers is pace, which he has a little bit of, but decent crossing is useful, and his finishing's not too bad either. Right back, we've got Ward here, who's a right back playing right mid. And the thing that really stands out to me about this guy immediately is he doesn't offer very much in the attacking department. And this is one reason I like to use the polygon to quickly assess players. Because I know not everyone is a fan of the polygon, and I certainly wouldn't say go and use this over everything all the time. But in this kind of example... Uh, just simply by looking at these players' stats, I can already see that Pantzel is going to be a far better kind of attacking right mid than Joel Ward is at right mid, despite the fact Joel R Ward can play there. So one thing I'm going to do straight off the bat here is I'm actually going to be training Pantzel to play right mid, which he can already semi-play. And the reason for that being is, as I've just explained, I think he can make a better right mid than um, Ward, and then Ward can drop back into right back, because this guy's a fairly decent defender. You know, he's got decent mentals, decent aerials, and fairly decent speed, which would be useful in a right back. Uh, attacking mid, we have John Williams here, young centre attacking mid, although he prefers to play centre mid, which makes me wonder whether I should maybe change my system slightly. Um just looking at it on the face of things. What I think I'm going to do is I might switch to a 4-1-4-1. One problem with this being is the fact that Austin, Charlie Austin, who we'll come on to in a second, might be slightly kind of left out on his own. Just a quick look at Charlie Austin. This guy's a beast on FM. If you can sign him, please do. Looks like the previous manager signed him this year for 6.75 million, which is a fairly hefty transfer fee. However, he has scored six goals in 12 games, so he has scored a fair few for us. So now that we've looked at that and we've got a fairly strong starting eleven, usually I'll just ask my assistant to pick, um, you know, the uh, subs because they usually do a best, good job of this. And especially with our current kind of currently injury, current injury problems, uh, it'll automatically sort out our team. You'll also notice it's taken out the injured players as well. So we can see the players who are going to be coming in to kind of fill the void. We've got Dicker Choi here, who's a very good centre defensive mid. Zemmermana, <laughs> what a name! Uh, this guy looks like he's going to be fairly useful. Uh, good creative player again. There's a few creative players in here. Uh, but he looks like he can do a job certainly for us in midfield. Uh, Pantzel is playing with his injury. And then at centre-back we have uh, Ramage coming in to fill up the gap. Uh, left by Dunn's injury and Delaney will play there. So all in all, we've got a fairly strong team. I think with this tactic, I'm probably going to be playing uh, a very rigid attacking tactic no oh, see the pro uh, this is a bit of a dilemma because um they want me to play attacking football but if i play attacking football the chances are we're going to concede a lot so i need to find a kind of balance between the, the two and then work with this but one thing i'm definitely looking at looking at my two center mids is maybe bringing in a new center mid already just someone who's going to win the ball alongside dicker Choi and whoever else partners him but all in all we're not looking too bad at the moment in terms of the squad, it looks like we've got uh, a squad that I can certainly work with. Obviously, there's a few injuries to talk about, but these guys can be uh, you know, brought back into the squad fairly soon. Uh, Dunn's only out for a few weeks. Uh, Gabidon is out for two to three months. That's not a great one. Uh, Chris Commons isn't out for too long either, uh, only two days, so he'll be back soon. And then Jedinak comes back from international duty. So anyway, what we've done there is we've set up our first tactic. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to save this as... Um, Palace 451 and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add tactic existing tactic uh, archive tactic and then I'm looking for Palace oh gosh I've gone blind there we go and then I'm going to add this tactic and now what we're working on is an alternative so this is going to be our standard tactic for now at least obviously these tactics will slowly develop over time uh, but now what I want to do is I want to set up two alternate tactics and what I'm really looking for is a slightly more attacking tactic and a slightly more defensive tactic. So for the slightly more defensive tactic, what we're going to do is we are going to uh, set up like so. Uh, one thing I should point out is, um, say in this situation when I'm setting up the new tactic, I used to drag Dicker Choi and swap him with Williams and then just drag Williams up top. This would mean on the first tactic, it changes around where the players are based. So when you're setting up your tactic uh, and doing it like this, just a little thing that I strongly recommend is that um, kind of don't don't... Um, oh, what's the word? Don't drag players and swap them. Just move their positions around, or it will kind of, I guess, screw up your tactic a little. Uh, but anyway, this is the tactic we're going to go with when we need to go slightly more attacking and we really need to go for the win. 
just so like we're we're committing a few me- more men forward. Uh, kind of kind of your tactical, you know, last 30, 30 minutes, last twenty minutes, maybe your two goals down, and you're really chasing a game. You know, a tactic where um, fairly solid in the centre, but still offering attacking threats. And then just one more tactic. This is your park the bus. Uh, you know, let's defend uh, backs to the wall kind of tactic. And for this one, um, I'm going to go just with something fairly standard, uh, but basically um, just a really counter-attacking tactic. The kind of tactic that we might use, uh, say, against one like um, United away or another big side away. But anyway, that's our system done for today's game. Uh, so, yeah, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this first episode. The reason I can't advance any days is because I now need to do the next episode, which is going to be swapping around the staff and stuff. But that's all for a separate episode. We'll be talking about setting up your training schedules and stuff in that one. Uh, hopefully you're looking forward to that. If you could give, give a like on the video, please uh, do so. It does help me out and it lets me know that you guys are enjoying the videos. If you've got any suggestions for what you'd like to see me kind of explain and talk about in terms of turning around a club in future episodes, feel free to leave that um down in the comments chances are i will cover it in a future video and other than that hopefully you like the kind of concept behind this video uh, if you've got any further comments you know just about the concept itself anything you'd like me to do differently leave it down below i'm more than happy to listen to your guys suggestions and other than that guys it is me jack and i'll talk to you guys in a bit i'm out